Education for Liberation. That's the idea behind the Paul Robeson Freedom School. The new commu community supported school in Williamsburg is in the tradition of similar initiatives going back to the civil rights movement throughout the American South in the early 1960s. Freedom schools were originally set up as grassroots efforts to create social, economic, and political equality in underserved areas of the United States. Many are still in existence, including the Native American Aquasasne Freedom School, teaching the cultural and linguistic heritage of the Mohawk people, as well as the Paulo Freire Freedom School in Tucson, Arizona, named after the influential Brazilian educator and philosopher who authored the book Pedagogy of the Oppressed. The Freedom School in Brooklyn was started by a group of Occupy protesters following in that tradition. The historic red brick building housing the school was made available by a local church. Many Occupy movement participants, with the help of nearby community members, are improving the available facilities, which include a cafeteria, library, media lab, three classrooms, and an open backyard. Occupy Brooklyn TV visited the school and spoke with some of the organizers there. Here's what they had to say. Freedom School is an idea that was developed in 1964 in Mississippi. And it was developed because uh, there were no, uh, there were uh, difficulty. The system wouldn't allow African Americans to be educated at all. Here's a group of people who I know are very interested in some of the same kind of struggles that I am right now in the city. Uh, I've worked with some of them in the past through Occupy and I couldn't help but reach out and want to invite them to the farm for a day of kind of learning and excitement in the gardens. So the community got together and they formed these uh, volunteer schools back in the 60s. They formed these volunteer schools where t retired teachers would get together in the community and uh, in churches and they would start classes because uh, the system, the education system, was uh, failing the students and uh, African Americans could not be educated. So what we're doing here, myself and Justin, uh, and the other teachers here, what we're doing here is re we're recreating the freedom schools from the uh, 60s. The Paul Robeson Freedom Project, of which this school is one element, is a an endeavor uh, undertaken by the Coalition for Public Education, which is a, in itself a group, a partnership of many education activists, grassroots activists in New York City. And the Brooklyn group of it, myself, Rodney Dees, uh, David DuBose, and many other longtime activists with many more years experience than myself, we came together and decided that we wanted to create an alternative school, a a freedom school in the spirit of the freedom schools of the South in the 60s, of the community control movement for local control of education and for community control of education. We're currently, as Christo said, sitting in the library. Um, we, uh, after the NYPD threw out our books last November, rebuilt our collection, and it's been housed in several different places um, for a long time. It was housed in a building um, with the uh, the teachers union. We've had it in storage in Manhattan for a couple of months, and and now we have it here. Um, we're so happy to have it out of storage because now it's use usable again. Um, and it's really a symbiotic relationship between us and the school and that they get this fabulous collection. We get a place to stick our books and we're so happy to have people be able to use them. About a week ago, the Paul Robeson Freedom School came to visit me at the DeKalb Farm, which is a project I've been working on for the past two years. It's in downtown Brooklyn as part of the DeKalb Market. Um, and basically the kids came. Uh, you know, I'd spoken to Rodney and Justin beforehand about possibly setting up a uh, field trip that they could come, get their hands dirty, learn about uh, where food comes from and some of the governing factors as to why the food that they find on the shelves in the grocery store is as it is. Um, and they ended up coming on a rainy day. It was really fantastic. We got wet, we got muddy. It was really fun. Um, and they did a harvesting project where they got to learn about some different vegetables they'd never known before. Uh, we made lunch together. We talked a lot about gardening in the city and how they could grow food themselves. And uh, yeah, it was a really fun day. 
the vision is culturally African Americans and Latinos when this community where we're in now is predominantly African American and Latino they never get any culturally relevant curriculum and so what uh, you know it's happening here is that the African American and Latino students are learning about their culture it's a very collaborative environment it's a very um, evolving environment um, the young people are very excited about the programming here, about the curriculum, which is very culturally relevant. It's really rooted in their African heritage, uh, but also in our shared cultural heritage of social justice activism, of uh, struggle uh, against oppression, against injustice. I'm a, real, I'm a real life librarian in the real world, uh, so I come in here on the weekends and, and in the evening and right now we're still kind of getting everything in order uh, since we just brought over boxes and boxes oh, yeah. of stuff all mixed together so that's the work we've been doing lately is separating out fiction and nonfiction, getting all the history books together, stuff like that um, and then hopefully we'll be teaching um, the students here at the school and other community members how to run the library so teaching librarianship skills yeah, and then and today, if there's any interest Tuesday, also Wednesday, doing the kind of normal teaching that librarians yeah, do yeah. bibliography yeah. and, and you know, things like that you know kind of like the homework yeah, help style yeah. stuff that public librarians and school librarians often do. I grew up in the city and uh, was one of those kids who had no idea where a carrot comes from thought it you know grew on the shelf in the grocery store uh, and as uh, I kind of grew up, became more aware of all of the things around me. I started seeing that all of these factors uh, connected to food had a lot to do with power systems, with trade agreements, with all of those things that we're um, affected by on a daily basis. And I think that these things go um, largely unnoticed in a daily grind. You know, in New York, we're all so busy kind of getting from point A to point B. So when I started this farm, it was really important to me to reach out to young people, especially who were disconnected from, you know, the food system. Uh, the program that I've been running for the last two years uh, caters to shelter youth who are eating largely institutional food, which is the pits <laughs> by far um, and so you know we've been reaching out trying to get people involved in uh, taking control of their food system. The public school that myself and Justin had to go into because uh, they were being uh, uh, what they call phased out. It's a process that happens here in the United States and America and New York specifically where the mayor has complete control of the school system and there's no community, no, no, none, none of the uh, stakeholders here in New York are a, at the table making decisions for their children. So the need comes up, where can me as a parent have my voice heard in the public school system? Well, not in New York because the public school system is controlled by the mayor. One man decides how the children are going to be educated. We live in a world of immense opportunity, but we limit ourselves, and our culture in a way limits us. And so Occupy isn't dead, it's nowhere near dead. We know that. They've been writing the obituary for Occupy Wall Street since September 18th. This is, no, this is nothing new to those of us who've been engaged in the struggle. But if you came down to Occupy, if you went to Zakati Park and you felt that energy, and then you left, and you haven't been back in a while, or you wonder where it is or what's going on, take a look here at the Paul Robeson Freedom School. Go check out all of the amazing work that's come about as a result of Occupy and start a project of your own. It doesn't have to be called Occupy, that doesn't really matter. What matters is the commitment to trying to make a change, the commitment to exploring new possibilities, the, uh, the opening of new opportunities, the opening of new possibilities for people. So don't, don't get discouraged, you know, stay positive and share with us what you're doing and we'll, we'll work together.